The meeting has now begun. Hello everyone, my name is Roberta Waite. I'll be conducting today's uh, webinar with regards to the Yalink T5W series. Thank you for joining us. Um, I just wanted a quick show of hands uh, for uh, uh, to make sure that everybody can hear me. Fantastic, all right, I've got uh, a couple of people. Thank you, thank you. Um, now I'm just going to uh, share uh, my desktop um, as well. Okay, just another show of hands. Can you let me know if you can actually see that presentation? Yep, fantastic. Okay, we've got a resounding yes from everybody. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So thank you so much for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedules, especially at the end of the month, um, to find out more about the new Yalink T5W. So as I mentioned, my name is Roberta Waite. I'm the sales manager at Alloy Computer Products. Okay, now, last time I asked for a show of hands and this time I've just swapped to the next screen. Can everybody see that uh, next page? Yep, okay, fantastic, all right. It sounds like it looks like it's actually swapping over for everybody okay great we have a successful uh, webinar happening wonderful okay so let's get on with the agenda we'll talk a little bit about who Yalink is so that we're all on the same page uh, we'll introduce the new T5W series and then talk about some of the T5 key features of the new series and how to position it with your um, your product set uh, as well as to your customers So who is Yalink? Yalink started about 15 years ago in the telephony space with SIP phones. Uh, they have grown, they started with the T2 series uh, and uh, came out with the T4 series about five years ago and just recently the T, sorry, the T4 series about five years ago and the T5 series last year. Uh, they have become one of the most successful companies in the uh, VoIP, open VoIP space. Last year they hit number one ranks in terms of the most turnover of SIP handsets of any company in the world. Uh, pretty impressive uh, for a company that's uh, come from zero and in just uh, the short amount of time frame in the modern telephony uh, times of VoIP, uh, they've become number one, so the fastest growing company. And there's a few things that to attribute, you know, they can attribute that success to. Now, Yalink, uh, Yalink uh, we've been a distributor, Alloy has been a distributor for Yalink uh, for over 10 years. So we've seen them grow from strength to strength over that time and we've had uh, a wonderful partnership and, uh, and great success with the brand. But from our perspective, they are a dream vendor to deal with. Uh, their product has very little... Uh, uh, return rate. Um, extremely reliable, once they're implemented they do run for a very long time. So that's one of the key points um, about their success. The other one is that they're extremely focused on developing world-class product, uh, really good quality product um, that is pertinent to the market. So they often will go out to market. Um, I remember before the T4 series came out about seven years ago, we had a team of their management come out to Australia, interviewed quite a number of our resellers as to what they wanted to see in the next generation of telephones. They went back to their R&D with that feedback and they did this worldwide. Uh, and about two years later, we saw the T4 come out, came out. Now when the T4 hit the market, uh, we saw exponential adoption of the Yalink brand um, by ITSPs, by the telcos, you know, by uh, people, telephony people that were putting projects in on-premise. So just across the board, we saw a great um, up, 
uh, uptake of the uh, of the Yalink T4 series. Um, and today the T4 series is still a, I guess, one of the strongest models, the T4246, the strongest uh, brand that you'll see in the market, particularly here in Australia. They're also very strong with their partnerships. So uh, very strong with the various platform providers, such as 3CX and Broadsoft, uh, Metaswitch, Microsoft, as well as telco partners worldwide, uh, including um, Telstra and a number of the uh, telcos here in Australia, uh, Vocus, TPG and, uh, and Optus. In terms of their voice solution, they do provide voice solutions that cater for uh, pretty much all of the voice requirements within an organisation. So it would include the conference phones, ranging from smaller conference huddle rooms up into the large uh, boardrooms or training rooms. They also have uh, phones that cater for receptionists, for top end executives, uh, for workers, and uh, I guess for the occasional use phone. They also have a range of decked cordless phones for mobility, uh, which can be carried around the office as well, typically used in places like warehouse and retail and hospitality and the like. So they pretty much cover every aspect of uh, where a handset is needed within an organisation. Yalink also provide a video solution. Um, Alloy is a distributor for the video solution as well. Uh, they have a range of solutions that uh, enable people to have small meeting huddle rooms all the way up to your very large uh, boardroom uh, and multi-camera, uh, multi-AV decked out training rooms. Um, and they have uh, a, an, a cloud-based um, product, a software product that enables you to connect uh, your desktop, your mobile, and also all of the endpoints, you know, through that. It's called the Yelling Meeting Server. So, yeah, just a, 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 an all-in-all -all communications endpoint company, uh, both in the audio and the video space and collaboration. Focusing on the T5W series. Now, before I run into the T5W, you may all be familiar with the T5 series, which launched last year. Uh, we did see some models come out in uh, 2017, the T58V, for instance, we had some demo units come out, the 56s. Um, those, uh, the T5 series originally was uh, the 52, the 54, the 56 and the 58. Majority of those, in fact, being replaced. A couple of staying behind because they've now been certified with the Microsoft Skype for Business and Teams. That process taking a better part of one year. So when the T5W was on the uh, R&D scope, uh, it was a little bit late in terms of meeting the window for Microsoft certification into Teams. So they stuck with the older versions. The T5W series is what I'll focus on today. So um, there are some features that are, have been included under the hood uh, as part of the T5 series, um, and I'll focus on those ones predominantly, but also point out some of the key features of the T5, which are a standout compared to their T2, T4 series. So product positioning, the T2 was successful in its launch in the early days with Yealink. Uh, they, uh, their key success was actually interoperability with G, the general VoIP um, PBX providers um, and also your early adopters of cloud service, you know, which were often based on things like Asterix platforms. The T2 then, once the T4 came in, sort of got left behind. We still sell a lot of the T2, but the T4 really eclipsed you know, um, anything that came before it. And in the Australian market, the T4 is one of the dominant open SIP uh, uh, handsets that are available. Uh, it's used by um, pretty much all of the T1, T2, T3 um, layers of service providers and telcos, as well as your main uh, PBX uh, that's out there, UC pro products, uh, which are the open um, UC products that are available. So very widely accepted by the market, there's no doubt about that. Um, and that's really positioned Yarlink as ranked number one in the global market and also here in Australia in terms of phone shipments. With the new T5W series, 
which is replacing the T5 series, um, they'll be positioned as the high-end IP phone. Uh, it'll uh, maintain Yarlink's lead, but look at their focus in terms of providing a, a range of phones that have been uh, developed with new chipsets and new uh, electronics under the hood, um, and also with a lot of new features, some of it patented by Yalink, uh, which is forward thinking and will carry the brand through over the next few years. The T2 and the T4, there are no plans to end of life those. The T4 series is uh, incredibly successful and will remain successful um, and still be available for a lot of years coming. So there's no hurry to transition. Um, this is an awareness of, in terms of what the T5W um, series uh, has to offer. Uh, we don't expect any, you know, great further changes in terms of the T5 uh, series. They did launch with the T5S um, series to begin with, but had a rethink back to the drawing board in terms of what was offered in that series. Uh, I think uh, predominantly it didn't offer enough of the uh, distinction between the fours and the fives. Now they've come out with the T5W series um, and it will uh, definitely be stand on its own merits. So here's the range as it currently stands in the T5W and this is what we'll be seeing over the next few years. At the bottom, you've got the T53, 53W, 54W and 57W. The T53 won't be available here in Australia, but the 53Ws, 54W and 57W are, as well as all of the others. So uh, for prime business use, uh, we have the three models at the bottom. The smart business phone is the 58. Now the 58 uh, comes without the camera and with camera. A lot of you are familiar with the T58V, which is the uh, current version of the one with the camera. Uh, it has some differences in terms of under the hood features and also new casing. So therefore they've decided to just rename it as the T58 with and without camera. And the video phone of the series is the upgrade to the current T49. It's called the VP59. So we'll have a, a little bit of a look at the, uh, the um, particular features of the VP59 as well. You're welcome to ask questions along the way. You can just put up your hand uh, or there's a chat bar there. So you can just write in some questions as we go. I'm more than happy to answer questions as we go as well, rather than just saving them towards the end. So here's a replacement solution. Uh, we have plenty of stock still of the 54S and the 56s. Uh, so if uh, you are currently supporting those and have got some opportunities on the go, don't be afraid that you won't be able to get supply of them. We can still supply for a bit of time uh, until the new models go into full production. The 52 is gone. Uh, we did, they did end of life that uh, last year. It was very quiet, uh, more under the table, uh, but because the T52 had rolled out in some markets, not necessarily here in Australia, but in other markets quite strongly, and so therefore it was a bit of a quiet end of sale. Here in Australia, we stopped um, buying them and the last of the shipments came in, I think in November. There's no more available at all and it's no longer manufactured. There's still stock of 54s, 56, um, 58s and the 58V, and also I think a few of the T49s. They're being substituted as follows. So the 52 will become the T53W. It's black and white screen, but a lot more under the hood functionality, which will run through in terms of the added features, but at the same price point. The 54 becomes the 54W, that reduces slightly in price. Uh, these prices are, uh, I think, um, what you'll find is the SAP or the online price typically of these products. Oh, so the um, MSRP price in the US dollars. But in Australian dollars, it's a, it's a similar scenario. You know, one price and then the new uh, model is slightly lower in price. So the T4054W, more features, uh, more under the hood functionality, uh, better uh, positioned um, in terms of, you know, uh, the firmware, but the price is slightly less. Same with the 56 going to the 57W. And then the old, uh, the 
gets um, to the 58A is the same price. The 58V to the 58A with the camera, same price. And then the video phone at the bottom, all same price. So that gives you a pretty good idea in terms of you know, where the new range sits in comparison to the old T5 range. So there's five key features compared to the old T5, w, uh, T5 series that the W has. Starting with the T53W, the key feature there compared to the uh, 52 is that it has a black and white LCD screen. It's, it's larger than the T52 was, uh, but it's black and white, being black and white, it actually can, um, it's got very sharp characters. So in terms of clarity, it is clearer because it's a smaller screen when you go, uh, when you do have colour, it can kind of fuse uh, when you sort of uh, stand back and look further away, when the further away you are from the screen. In terms of a small screen, black and white actually works a lot better and then moving away from it, you can still see characters even from a further distance. So most people would have the phone compared to where their eyes are uh, positioned somewhere between, you know, almost uh, about one metre away from them um, or, you know, half a metre to one metre away from them. So I, I'm a person that tends to use my headset a lot and a soft phone and so therefore I have the phone away from me about half a metre, uh, about a metre. But if you're picking up the handset and using it on a regular basis, it would tend to be about half a metre away from you on the desk. Here it is again uh, uh, in comparison to a competitor product, the VV6250, which is about the same price point and feature as the um, T53W. And as you can see, it's got um, really good clarity uh, of the characters um, as black and white. A very vibrant background though. Um, so that uh, really brightens up what you can see in terms of the characters. That um, then, even though it's a smaller screen and let's face it, uh, cost in phones often comes down to also the size of the LCD screen. Um, and whether it's touch screen or not. Uh, so in this case, keeping it black and white and a smaller screen does help in terms of the reduction of the actual price, but you still get a good visual experience. Another key feature compared to the T5 series, the T58 had an adjustable screen, so you could actually tilt it back and forth. With the new series, all of them, and they can um, have got an adjustable screen. So depending on the brightness, the fluorescent lighting, the glare that might be shining on the phone, you have the ability to be able to adjust that. So tilt it towards you or away from you. Um, also, you know, accordance to your height and sitting position on the desk. So that little feature there, I think, is um, really fantastic from a user experience just that little bit of flexibility in adjusting the screen. It is one of those bugbears that people tend to have when they're using their phone a lot. They all have Bluetooth, uh, built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So the old five series, the 52 and the 54 at the low end did not have these built in. Uh, you needed to use a USB dongle at the back of it, the BT40 or the WF40 um, to enable either one of those features. And because I only had one port, it was one or the other. With the new phones, you've got all of this built into it and still have a USB port free on the back of it. The 56 and 58 have got two USB ports free on the back of it. So you save on a USB port. You also reduce the cost because you don't have extra accessories that need to be purchased in addition to the actual handset. So if you think back to the price of what the 52 was compared to the 53 being identical in price, however, the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi is included. So you're actually getting more for your money, which is a good thing. There's no extra accessories, which I have to say is, a, is definitely a positive. From a provisioning perspective, we often drop ship and provision on behalf of companies here. It means that we don't have to try and marry up accessories and then, you know, ship all of that out. And they're often shipped out separately because it's the onus, you know, would be on the customer to put it together. For an ITSP, it's headache free. Uh, not uh, missing uh, little bits and pieces that need to be added on by their customer once it's drop shipped. Uh, knowing that all of those features are actually included on the on the phone itself. It also makes for a very elegant 
um, uh, look and appeal of the actual phone itself. In future, Yarlink will be releasing the new Wi-Fi solution, so a lot faster Wi-Fi deployment as well. Um, all of these phones actually have dual Wi-Fi capability as well. The old phones only had the single Wi-Fi um, band. Updated Bluetooth standard, so Bluetooth 4.2, the old ones had the Bluetooth 4. Uh, you can connect handsets, uh, sorry, you can connect headsets, but you can also connect mobile phones where you may be running a, an app. Uh, and also uh, synchronise your contacts from your mobile phone onto the desk phone and call numbers from there. But also if you've got an, in, uh, an inbound call coming in, you can pick it up on your handset. So a bit of flexibility there, um, as you can see in the picture. A new feature, which is something that uh, Yarlink have come up with, and I think it's unique in the market of all the brands, amongst all brands, um, even uh, amongst the other Yarlink um, series, is what they call the corded cordless phone feature. Every one of the T5W models can act as a decked base station. A little dongle called the DD10K can be implemented uh, onto the USB port at the back of the phone and you can have up to five of the cordless decked handsets connected to it. So the decked handsets in the Alink range are the 53H and the 56H. There is no need for the 60B base station. This is a great little small office, home office solution. It can be used in hospitality, can be used in um, retail, uh, in workshops, uh, in warehousing, in health, in small business, uh, anywhere where you've got uh, a desk phone, so this can be used for, by receptionists, and then you've got the cordless um, phones which people can walk around with. It can support up to four parallel calls. So the handsets themselves can have an individual extension or they can all be part of the same extension, ringing um, together. You can actually transfer calls from that one handset to another. And just moving to the next screen, they also have a master-slave mode. So you can nominate one of the phones to be a, a, a slave um, and uh, when you've got one handset registered to the T5 um, desk phone, uh, if you're on the desk phone but you decide that you need to move away, walk away for some reason, maybe to go and look at some stock uh, or maybe you, know, you need to go and check to see if something is available on the shelf uh, or if you're needing to go and talk to somebody else and ask them a question, you can convert the, from the desk phone to the handset by pressing a button on the front of the phone that says master slave. It changes from master to slave. Pick up the handset and then keep talking. So there's no drop off, you just continue the phone call. The other way is that you can pick up the phone call from the handset, come back to your desk phone, press the master slave, so it goes from slave back to master, and then continue uh, on the uh, master phone. Now, if you've got a headset, um, for instance, you've picked up the call with your cordless handset, uh, away from your desk, walk back to the desk, convert it back to the desk phone, put your headset on and then type away at the desk whilst you're still talking. So a lot of different flexibility and uses in terms of this um, little cord corded cordless feature, phone feature. Great for bundling for small business. Another great feature on board all of the T5W series is uh, the content sharing. This is a bit of a surprise. We weren't expecting this, but they've added it in. So the A-Link video conferencing desktop client can be installed uh, at two different sites. The phone, when it's connected to the PC, so your PC runs through the pass-through port uh, on the back of the phone, you know, which then goes to the Ethernet port uh, to your network, uh, recognises the content that is actually on your screen, grabs 
that's uh, content of the screen and can shoot that through the phone to another phone at the other end that you're speaking to where they also have got video the A-Link VC desktop installed and that can splash up so you can share content without needing the intervention of a video conferencing server or um, a host of any sort For us here at, at, uh, at Alloy, um, we've got a lab here, so we test all of these features ourselves uh, you know, with our tech support team. It's one feature that we're uh, waiting to test, so we're just waiting for the latest version of the desktop, the VC desktop that will support this feature. We'll pull out one of the T5Ws and we're going to test this feature to see you know, exactly how it does work. But um, that's uh, an interesting... Um, I guess uh, added on feature, uh, which I think you know sort of might make sense for communication between uh, within a company between offices. I mean, you have to both have you know Yaling VC desktop installed and also the phone installed, uh, but it does mean that you can share content uh, whilst you're still on the phone talking about the content that you are sharing. I can see some really good uses for this. So here's the T53 um, Ws, the 53, 54, 57 in comparison to the older models. These are the main uh, differences in terms of the feature set. The colour will change. So it's going to be a slight matte grey, business grey they call it, compared to a metallic grey of the T5 series. The screen sizes are slightly um, different. As you can see, the 52 to the 53, it's bigger. Um, the 54 uh, say, stays the same in terms of size. Uh, the resolution is sharper uh, when it comes to the 53. The 54 is the same. And as you move down, update, upgraded uh, Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is built in. It was not in the 52, 54s. The Bluetooth is 4.2 in the older ones. In the other ones, it was uh, Bluetooth 2.1, so still quite quite outdated. Um, there is unified uh, firmware. Uh, well, there was in the 5254s. Um, the Acoustic Shield uh, is a new feature, which is in red, which we'll go through. Um, we'll also have a look at the EXP50, which is the expansion module. Um, also, the HD logo has changed and the web user interface. A couple of features that have been added in that we've already gone through is the corded cordless phone feature and the content sharing. So a lot of under the hood added features that have been added to these new series of T5Ws and in uh, most cases, the 54, 57, they are lower in price. Acoustic Shield. Now this is an interesting one. Acoustic Shield means that uh, with the mics, there's several different um, uh, mics that are actually in the handpiece uh, and on the phone itself. And you, uh, there's a setting on the actual phone uh, which enables you to um, set Acoustic Shield. So press the button. It determines where the background noise is relevant to you. You know, sort of creating this virtual shield. And then, for, you know, when you set it for future phone calls, uh, it basically blocks out sound, you know, um, in those frequencies and volume range. So for people in call centres uh, or in busy lane areas, uh, let's just say communal areas, a lot more people using communal areas um, within organisations. They work from home, but then when they come in, they tend to work in a communal area. Uh, as well as, uh, say, for instance, digital receptionists. When you walk into uh, some into an office, um, you uh, can dial a phone extension for the person you want instead of speaking to a receptionist. So those areas where there tends to be um, a bit of uh, background noise happening, this is a really good feature. With the EXP, the expansion module, which gives you a you know further um, uh, numbers of screens of all of the uh, people in your organisation, the address book. Um, in the T with the T53W, the EXP50 
comes up as colour, uh, sorry, as black and white. So it matches uh, the, the black and white screen. And then for the 54, 57, 58, it uh, becomes colour screen. The old web user interface and the old yarling green colours and uh, it's, you know, uh, quite dossy looking. Uh, and the new web user interface. Um, the user interface is a lot easier to navigate. It looks cleaner uh, and um, should be easier to navigate from an administrator's perspective. The HD logo has changed from the top of the handset to the bottom. Uh, I think it's just to distinguish between the old series and the new series. So it's a quick way for you to be able to visually identify when you've got, say for instance, an old 54S and a new 54W, you can tell immediately which is the 54W as opposed to the old 54S. The comparison between the new T58A and the old. So the 58A has had an under the hood upgrade. Uh, it's changed slightly in colour, has new Wi-Fi, um, dual band, new Bluetooth 4.2. Uh, the firmware, so the software firmware uh, will be 58.83 or higher. Um, that will run on the new ones and not the old ones. Um, the rest of it, the HD logo is different. That's probably about it when it comes to the differences. The 58V is replaced with the 58A with camera. So the 58A with camera, so the 58 was donated with a V initially because it was going to be the video conferencing uh, phone option in the series. They've decided to move it out of its position as the video conferencing endpoint to become a handset with a camera. Sounds funny, I know, but that distinction um, makes a difference in terms of how to position it. You can position it as being a executive or reception phone with all the bells and whistles. It includes a camera because the camera enables you to then connect this phone as part of, say, a connection to front door access, uh, a camera that might be pointing in the reception area, a camera that is sitting on an intercom. So it would be used in that kind of a configuration as opposed to a point-to-point, -point, another endpoint video conferencing unit. The video conferencing unit is the VP59 in this series. So there's uh, a, a grid of the main differences. Um, if you can see the 50, the 49 is really outdated in terms of under the hood features, you know, so I won't even go through what that had. Um, but the 58 to the 59, um, series. Uh, it's just an update in terms of Wi-Fi standard, Bluetooth standard, um, the, uh, a couple of additions in terms of the um, HDMI cable being added in there as well. So let me just run you through that. Also all of the new T5W features like acoustic shield and content sharing etc are included on the VP59 um, as well. So let's just run through the 59, the VP59. Now it's got a much bigger screen. It's an 18 inch screen. The 58 is only seven inch. You can see that it's got this um, audio band at the front. So the speaker is in fact at the front um, to provide excellent projection, you know, quality speaker. It also has the ability, it also has an HDMI port. So if you're familiar with the T49, it's kind of, it's the same thing. It's got a standard HDMI port. It comes with a cable. So you can connect that to a large LCD screen. You can detach the camera and connected by cable, it can sit, mount at the top of a screen. I wonder if they show it. No, they don't. Um, but the camera can sit on top of the screen and therefore you can run video conferencing through the, the VP59 but 
you know, have it connected to a big screen and the cam sitting up on top to create a small huddle room experience. And the speaker phone that's on the actual phone itself uh, is, you know, uh, uh, good enough to project, you know, high quality sound, almost like a conference uh, phone. Quick look at the relationship between the T4 and the new T5W. Um, if you translate them across the 48 to the 57, the 46 to the 54, and the 42 to the 53. You may find that the T53W, however, in terms of price point, sits somewhere between the 46 and the 42. It's got a bigger screen than the 42, colour screen as well. It's got the same number of buttons, uh, programmable buttons, programmable keys, uh, sorry, slightly uh, less number of programmable keys than the 46, but more than the 42. Um, and it's got all of those extra features on board, Bluetooth, um, Wi-Fi built into it, acoustic shield and content sharing, uh, and also the tilt screen. Uh, so, you know, for a price point that's between the 42 and the 46, I can really see the 53W taking off. So again, another way of looking at it. The 42 to the 54W can be seen as an upgrade um, for uh, current providers, uh, but the 4 Series is not going to go end of life for the next few years at least. It's still going to be around for a very long time. It still needs to support a lot of platforms and a lot of uh, customer base that are out there. Right, so still available and if you like the T40, 42, the 46s and you've certified them to your platform, you're familiar with them, you've got all your templates you know, for provisioning around them, then keep going with them. Uh, but have a look at the T5W series for future. So the 53, 53W and the 42, there's a quick comparison of them. Larger screen, adjustable screen, more pages, uh, you know, in terms of memory keys. It can support an expansion module, the 42 did not. Uh, it has the acoustic shield, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth all built in and also the other features we talked about, that is uh, only in the 5W. Same with the 46s. Um, the 46s did support Bluetooth and Wi-Fi via a dongle. Now with the 54, it is in fact built in. The 57 to the 58, again, we've got the new features included. So the acoustic shield, the corded cordless, the content sharing, um, and also the adjustable screen, um, which is a big plus. But as you can see, price point, it's not that much different. So how do we target? Let's move on to where to position the T5W series. I do stress, continue with the T4648s, right? But going forward, if you've got customers who have currently bought the T52 or the 54S, the, 50, the T5W series is the next step to look at to replace those and your customers I'm pretty sure will be pretty happy. Price point is about the same, the 54 is in fact less, um, but you get more on board the features. So your customers can stick with you um, and you know what you're offering can um, can continue in the same the same line of, um, uh, of offering uh, with the new T5W series. So for, for, uh, for customers that um, you have, I mean, the 46S is the biggest selling model. You know, we sell five times the T46s compared to any other model in the series. It's not going to die off, you know, in a hurry. It's going to continue on. Um, but if you want to differentiate yourself, you like the look of the new phones, they are a better design in terms of both aesthetically uh, and also under the hood, better quality, new electronics and a lot more features. Um, for instance, they've pointed out one of the um, features here is the LCD screen. Obviously, when the T4 series was designed, LCD screens were, you know, that was five, six years ago. With the T5 series, the 5Ws, 
they've got the latest um, LCD technology built into their small screen. So they're using the latest uh, gear that's available on the market and componentry. Customers that want to differentiate themselves, let's face it, with the T4 series, one of the reasons why Yarnink wanted to come out with the T5 series in the first place is that they found that the T4 series is so successful that they had a lot of copycat on the market from other brands. Uh, uh, other brands also copied the design, but we had some direct, you know, almost indistinguishable copycats that have come out of, um, uh, of some marketplaces um, that are, you know, look almost identical to the T4 series. They don't perform anywhere near as well. Um, the T46 is, is extremely reliable and performs and functions incredibly well. But you might want to differentiate yourself going forward away from the mainstay market. So you've got those differentiating um, features of the T5W at the same price point or even less in some, you know, for some of the models than compared to the T4. You've got built-in features. So for customers that are wanting Wi-Fi, uh, and everybody pretty much is moving across to BT, um, but the Wi-Fi dongle, more and more customers don't want a cable. Uh, they just want to be able to put phones in and um, have them across their uh, network. The Wi-Fi standard that they've implemented in the new ones is of the latest um, Wi-Fi standard. There is dual band, so you're probably going to get a lot better performance. From our perspective, as a provider of VoIP products, uh, we have always played caution when it comes to VoIP desk phones uh, being used across a Wi-Fi network because um, telephony over Wi-Fi is very susceptible, very dependent on the quality of the Wi-Fi network that it's being used on. And so not the fault of the phone, but often you know, how is that network running? So from this perspective, building in a little bit um, later features, you know, Wi-Fi standard uh, and also dual bandwidth might um, help alleviate, you know, some of those issues that come up. So, you know, there's positivity around that. And also customers are interested in Android. Now, Android is a bit of a question mark. Um, but it made sense because from Yarling's perspective, putting Android onto their T5 series means that they've able to been able to certify their phones with a third party product like Teams and Skype for Business. Microsoft Teams uh, require all of the desk phones to, ha to be Android based because not only do they become natively configured to Teams, but they also uh, have the Teams client in an APK on the actual phone itself. So, um, you know, both the user uh, um, experience as well as the administration, you know, is covered off there. From your perspective, you might want to have a look at how you can implement using third party uh, product that can be downloaded as an APK onto the phones. You might want to design something that is specific to your platform that you offer to your um, customer base that can lock the phone in to your platform. So there's a couple of ways in which we're finding people have started using the, um, the Android. All right, so wrapping it up. Question one, what are the five key features that have been mentioned with the new T5W? Okay, let's look at that. Wrapping it up, the T53W is black and white screen. It is a larger screen size, however. All of the five Ws have got adjustable LCD screens. They all have built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. They all have corded and cordless phone feature. They all support the content sharing. And I might add there, they have left out the acoustic shielding. They all include the acoustic shielding capability as well. So what is the relationship of the T4S to the new T5W series? Big question that everybody's got. The T4S will continue in its strength in the market. Um, there's no, and I'll emphasise that again, um, there, is no, there is no plans, there are no plans for the T4 series to become end of life. 
the new T5W series are an upgrade from the T4S phones. So if you are looking for the next generation of phones to move to, the T5W uh, is the series to look at. Any questions? Please, um, you might have to chat with your questions. This morning I did try and work out how to actually get everybody unmuted, but if you put up your hand, uh, I can attempt to unmute or just put your question into the chat. Right, here we go. Okay, so not uh, getting a lot of questions. Gee, I must have done a good job with this uh, presentation in answering all your queries. All right, next week we have the um, Teams and Skype for Business presentation happening. So uh, leading on from the T5W, we've also got um, the, oh, hang on, questions. Okay, here we go. Right, yes, Skype for Business and Team Compatibility. So, uh, the Skype for Business and Team Compatibility, the T5W series uh, was uh, in R&D as, as Yarlink were getting the certification for teams happening, which takes quite a bit of time. So that that was occurring, you know, whilst the T5 was still in inception, now it's available. I'm pretty sure the T5W in years to come may become Teams compatible. They're all Android phones. At the moment, what is compatible with the, T, the um, Skype for Business? It is the T4 series. What, and also the 56A and the 56, uh, sorry, the 58A. What is Teams compatible? It is the 56A and the 58A. They are certified with Teams. So at this current moment, only the A-Link T56A, T58A and the CP960 for Teams are certified with Teams as endpoints. They run on a different firmware. So the phones themselves look the same, but underneath, we replace the firmware with Skype for Business or Teams and they're licensed to either Skype or Teams. In terms of future plans, that is very possible, but as I said, the certification process is very long-winded, so we may not see that for at least another 12 months to come. Not sure what that means. Can you have them tagged on the presentation, please? Maybe I will speak to you. I'll give you a call and I'll just ask. Ah, okay. So uh, not in this T5W series. The 56A and the 58A are not part of the T5W series. So that's why, you know, uh, none of these ones um, are SFB or team certified. In next week's presentation, I'll be covering what is Skype for Business and Teams product. Yep. But on the Yalink website, if you go to the Yalink website at the moment, you should be able to see, and, and let me just uh, actually uh, do that. If you can just bear with me for a sec, I'll just give a quick lead in to this. Um, nope, I can't, mid uh, presentation. If you go to the Adlink website, click on the products, click on the Skype for Business and Teams, Microsoft Certified, and you'll see the range there. The overlap in terms of Skype for Business and Teams is the 56A and the 58A um, and the CP960. 
So they're the two common ones. I know that there's a lot of customers that are on Skype for Business On-Prem that will need to migrate at some stage over to the Teams. And at the moment, they're looking for new handsets and these ones will carry them over from the old to the new platform. So going forward at the moment, it's 56, 58. They'll be there for probably the next 12 months and we will see the 50, the um, 5W series. Uh, I don't want to preempt anything, but you know it makes sense if they would be certified at some stage down the track. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I am available, send me an email or give me a phone call. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have. Now, just before we do wrap it up, let me tell you about the availability. So in terms of what's available, the 53W and the 54W, we currently have in demo stock. So we've got units available, about 40 of each at the moment and another 30 to 40 coming in uh, in a few weeks time. Um, still deemed as being demo stock. Full production will be available in late March, early April uh, in limited numbers. When I say limited, probably in the lots of one to 200. Full-fledged production will start to happen from May onwards. With the 57W, uh, still not available. The first demo stock is coming out in March. So this month we're getting some stock. We expect uh, the production, limited production, uh, to be available uh, in April, May. And then for May onwards, we're looking at full production availability. All right, so that gives you some timelines. If you want some 53Ws or 54Ws for testing purposes, we do have a demo um, price available. It is less than the usual NFR price uh, and it also gives you, um, all we need in return for that is for you to fill out a test report. Uh, we want the test report because we feed it back to Yalink because they want to know what the uh, uh, you know reception of these phones has been in the market, what your thoughts are around it. That's the way they do it. They want to know, you know, do you like the features? Is there anything you found that didn't work that you think needs improvement? the things that you do like that they should continue to um, to work with. So uh, please talk to our team with regards to uh, demo stock and um, the price on those ones. Uh, we've still got plenty of those available uh, to provide to you. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up. Hang on, I've got one more question to answer. One minute. Okay, excellent, not a problem. Look forward to speaking to you all. Please do contact your account managers as well. And also, just to let you know, if you are a 3CX um, partner, uh, the T5W series, I think, is just about there in terms of templates uh, support being available. I do believe, uh, look, 3CX and Yalink have got a very tight relationship. So the minute a phone becomes comes on the market, it's usually also in, you know, released in like a day or two later within 3CX. Um, I think in this case, uh, 3CX are just about to launch with version 16. I'm pretty sure all of their developers are working furiously to get that, uh, you know, go to market for their deadline this month. Uh, and we'll probably see the T5Ws uh, uh, also you know, as templates supported uh, with that version as it comes out. So I hope that pretty much answers everybody's questions. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, as I do, please, you know, uh, we're more than happy to answer any questions. We also have a tech support team here. So if you do need assistance in terms of getting the 53 or the 54 up and running, please give us a call. Um, they'll be able to assist you, um, you know, with regards to some of these fancy features that have been included. Um, and also if you want to manually configure the phone to 3CX at this point in time, yeah, please do give us a call and we can assist you. Okay, uh, just one more chat. Not a problem. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll talk to you at some stage. Mm, hang on. <laughs>